What's up, everybody? Welcome to your November Tarot Astrology Oracle reading. Yeah. Um, hopefully you like trap music because that's basically what I always play for these videos. I don't know. I was thinking, like, I should just be switching it up and, like, giving different genres. So, you know, I, I loved all kind of music. So we're going to be switching it up from now on. But we're going to start with the trap for November. Rock on. So November is going to be huge. It's going to be massive. Uh, there's going to be so many... Just so much things are switching up for us. Um, yeah, and it's just mainly really deep because a lot of the energy is in Scorpio, okay? And we'll get into that. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I have tons and tons of notes. Um, and this video is going to be different in general because instead of just doing a general astrology for everyone and then going to the per signs for tarot and astrology, I mean tarot and oracle, what I'm doing is giving the general dates as usual, and then I'm going to be giving astrology per sign as well as the tarot per sign. So kind of going into like, for example, for Gemini, if you have Gemini rising, Gemini moon, or Gemini sign, the full moon on November the 4th is going to be in your 12th house, and what that's going to mean, and Mercury is going to be entering your 7th house, what's that going to mean, you know? So that's going to be listed per sign. So hopefully you enjoy that. I'm going to, you know, um, I'm really realizing how deep, um, of a connection I have to astrology, and so I'm going to add more astrology as well to the readings. Um, what else did I need to say? Mm. I was contemplating like 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 making the videos more formal and not having them be so sp spontaneous and just me kind of you know speaking just free to you guys, but honestly, no, because I, I, I like the professionalism of other videos where they don't have me saying, you know, because I, was, I listen to my videos and I'm like, you know, I say I'm a lot or, you know, I, I, I sometimes can go on tangents and things, but I feel like that's the way you get the most raw information or like the most accurate things is if I'm just speaking truly from my heart. I and mean, when I plan things, things seem to get missed out. So I was just thinking about that. But anyway, so that's what I'm going to be doing um, in, in having that divide. So I'm excited to do that little transition. Um, and hopefully you guys like it. Comment and let me know. Um, also, I'm going to be doing a Q&A video soon. Um, not necessarily just for me, but for spiritual questions. So if you have any questions you want, you've been um, wanting to know about, um, I will make a video and I'll be answering them. So comment on all my videos. Um, send me emails or messages about anything you need you have a question on. I'm um, not really going to get into personal birth charts because that's for personal readings, but everything other than that. Awesome. Um, and then was that everything I need to say? Yes. And also visit my website constantly. Um, I am trying to, I'm going to be updating and adding more services, um, more unique services to me. Um, Cause I feel like I have, you know, the astrology, I have the tarot, that kind of thing. Um, but I, I'm an Aquarius number one, and I'm all about individuality and uniqueness. And I have, I want to kind of offer um, services that are unique to my special gifts. So I'm, I'm working on that now, and you know, we'll be editing the website throughout the month. Um, so stay in tune with that. And if you want to get a personal reading with me, please go visit my website. Um, I've been having the most amazing time with new clients, and and everything. There's just the amount of resonance in. The readings they're super super clear i end up talking for like two hours on some because i just go so deep into what's going on and i really feel the connection with everybody um who i'm reading for and so really get in contact with me and, and let's let's vibe out and let's see you know what's going on um sorry i thought that was a fly and it actually was something nasty um yes so hit my website up hit my instagram up as well the water bears t dot i mean the water bears period t on Instagram if you want to get the daily polls and just all the things I'm posting there. I'm starting memes as well, um, uh, spiritual memes, um, to help further, you know, learning and self-development self, self -development and self-knowledge um, through a more comical way. Um, okay, yeah, so that's kind of the intro. 
So let's get now into the astrology for the month of November. Um, rabbit, rabbit, if you, it's the first of November, so if you did not say that, say it for the first. You're supposed to say it before you step out of bed. Um, I did, thank God. I usually forget, but I didn't this time. Um, it's my sister's birthday as well today, so happy birthday, Kelly. She's a, she's a Scorpio, Pisces moon, Aquarius rising. Um, she has a, she's spiritual, super spiritual as well. We literally are, you know, we had our awakening at the, like the same day. Um, and so I'm going to give you her Instagram account. She is, um, just booming with, with all kinds of ideas. She, she's into writing. I'm an amazing writer. She's now starting her own poetry, um, doing yoga. She wants, she's just doing so much. So this is her Instagram page. It's called a black girl rising. And so go check that out. Um, and let's see. Yeah, and this is her. The Scorpio. Alright, so check her out. Check what she's sharing. I want to share a little um, snippet of something she wrote. Um, just kidding. I don't have it right. Oh, wait. Maybe I do. Hold on. Let me... So I wanted to share a little bit, um, just so you can kind of get a gist of her vibe, you know. Uh, let me see, I think. Okay, yes, yeah, she did post a quote. I mean, a, 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 actually, the, the, the poem was for the picture I showed you. So she wrote, I do it naturally, authentically me, though I may stray from the path others have drawn for me, I celebrate because I am free. To be me, I do it naturally authentically me rejoicing in the presence of the present the gift of being simply i do it naturally a black girl rising into authenticity this is me so check her out um and today is her birthday she literally was born on the spiritual new year day um so turn up okay so now getting into november so starting off um november on Saturday, November 4th, we have a full moon in Taurus, guys, okay? Um, a full moon in Taurus, and it's going to be, it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, it's going to be bringing the grounding we've been needing. There's been a lot of crazy fire energy in 2017. Um, 2017 is one ruled year anyway, and so it's all about that kind of fiery energy. Um, and, you know, it's just going to be, it, it's just been so much shifting and changing and not a lot of grounded practicality, not a lot of St stability okay um so this full moon in taurus on saturday is going to be bringing a lot more stability for everybody um which is i'm so grateful for that yeah um it's going to be bringing giving us reality check as well we're going to be really focused on what we've been manifesting taurus is the manifester of the zodiac um and it's the builder and so we're really going to be seeing like if you've been working on a project and really putting in planting seeds and working towards it and haven't been seeing that much you know um result this is the time where um, that will be happening, where, where you will be getting, um, yeah, that full, that full um, manifestation, okay? Sorry about that. I have the Gemini moon, so sometimes one part of my mind can go somewhere else. I was literally planning my post for my sister's birthday as I was channeling what we were just saying. Um, luckily, the information I'm speaking about is spiritual, and my higher self kind of steps in so I can... I'm kind of go into those kind of separate things, but I'm sorry about that. I, I'm, I'm not bad. Um, so that full moon is going to be amazing. I, if you check the the weekly video I did, there's going to be so much more information on it. I talk directly into it. This video I want to keep it kind of shorter because there's so much more I'm talking about. Um, so super grounded on the full moon in Taurus. There's going to be um, Venus opposite Uranus as well, which is going to be surprise revelations and surprise events happening with relationships um, that are going to help ground us more and really shift things in the material realm for us. So, you know, Taurus rules earth signs. It, I mean, it rules earth signs. It's an earth sign, so it is ruled by earth. Um, and so it, it, it has, you know, it's about the physicality, what we can touch, what we can build, what we can see. Um, the next day on the, oh, I pulled, I pulled some cards. It's going to show us, you know, situations where we're more blessed. We got the blessed Oracle card here. Um, it's going to be showing us, you know, j just in our reality now. We've been seeing, you know, oh, I can be grateful now for, you know, we've been seeing how we're more blessed in our relationships with the Libra season, blessed in our work atmosphere, our lifestyle in Virgo season. 
The Scorpio, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Scorpio season has been coming in and giving us blessings on our psyche, you know, and our, our mentality. Okay, spiritually, I'm, I'm blessed, you know, I'm an abundant. So now this full moon is going to be bringing that into our reality where we're going to see more about it. It's also, again, this is the card of gratitude and looking at and, and you know, enjoying what has manifested for you, the Nine of Pentacles. So this similar energy here and feeling, really basically feeling your oats, you know, really feeling like, feeling your vibes, um, feeling good about yourself, that kind of energy coming in. Um, and healing the past as well with this Six of Cups. This is Cups energy. This is that water energy, which is Scorpio all day. Um, we're in Scorpio season right now, and so I feel like, you know, this is a card of nostalgia, the past as well, and learning from the past. And also, though, it's healing things from past beliefs. This is a card of, like, sometimes when I'm stuck in my past beliefs or past limitations and it's blocking me, this card will come up. So that could be, you know, we're going to be healing things, moving on to a more, not, you know, the, the, the naivety and the innocence of something of, of our beliefs or the conditioning we've been put under, but now knowing more in ourselves and being more abundant in ourselves and feeling more blessed in ourselves, okay? So that's the energy for the full moon in Taurus. The next day on Sunday, November the 5th, we have Mercury moving into Sagittarius for like a whole month and a half, okay? Mercury is usually zooming, but for some reason it's a little slower than it right now. Um, it's 10-10 and I literally was thinking it's on purpose, so with it being 10-10, that's my confirmation. Um, and so it's on purpose. You know, Mercury basically is our communication. It is our thought process. It's how we put things together. Um, Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, which are the two signs that think and process and analyze. Not, I mean, all the air signs think as well, but everybody thinks. But you know what I'm saying? Like, like really, the focus on, for Gemini, you know, it's the twin. It's looking at, it's separating things and, and, and analyzing things in se separation, okay? And Virgo takes what's separate and it's analyzing and, and trying to put that together, okay? Um, and so that's Mercury. And so when Mercury just... Was, has been in Scorpio since October the 10th, and it has been, we've been trying to put things together underneath the surface, you know, things that are hidden within, um, you know, other people's feelings about us or feelings about situations or how we really feel, you know, on the, on the deep surface has been really analyzed and, and, and secrets have been revealed and hidden feelings and hidden, hidden desires have been all, you know, coming out, that kind of thing since the 10th, um, and, and, and really working on that and, and, and you know, the things, maybe your goals that you had, you're realizing, okay, that was set off of a desire that now I don't really want anymore. It was a hidden desire that I actually don't really need. Mercury pulled that up for you. So now Mercury's going to be slipping into Sagittarius. And that is the sign of once you have this darkness in Scorpio and you learn from the darkness and you have this new information that came out of the dark, you now have new light and new freedom, new optimism and new hope. And that's Sagittarius. And, and that is, I'm a little bit like mad. Breezy. I, I wanted to put on the chapstick because I usually am a little dry. And now I got a little overboard, but it's okay. Anyway, so yeah, if you know Sag, they're the most optimistic sign. They're always looking for the um, high road. They're lo looking for, um, you know, how to not be contained. And, and, and they hate restriction. Uh, they love freedom. And they love the fire sign and, and, and going places and, and doing things. Um, Sag is the life of the party kind of vibe. Um, and so with Mercury and Sagittarius, it's because Jupiter is the ruler. Jupiter is the most gaseous planet in the solar system. It is the most expansive planet. Earth literally is like 1,400 Earths can fit into Jupiter, I believe, or something like that. Um, and so, ow, I'll just scratch my back and it's hurting. Ow. Ooh. Mm. You have those random, I had like a random scab on my back. I don't know what happened. I scratched myself and I just scratched it because it's itching and it's just like, mmm. Mmm. Okay, so yes, Jupiter expands on things, and so that's sad. It, it wants to open things up and blow things up and expand, and, you know, let's be light and airy. Let's not think about the negativity. Let, let, let's see the positive aspects, okay? So we're going to be more optimistic in, in this new transit up until about Christmas, um, and that's I'm so excited for that, because Scorpio, I love Scorpio energy, because my third house, which is ruled by Mercury, is Scorpio, and so I naturally think and process things like a Scorpio, but it it's, has a pessimistic nature, and it's kind of skeptical, okay? We've been mad skeptical and mad pessimistic since October the 10th um, because of Mercury being in Scorpio, and it's Scorpio season now, and Jupiter's in Scorpio as well. So we're really, any information we're getting, we want to kind of double and triple check it and make sure, look underneath it and all kind of stuff, you know? And so now Mercury moving into Sag is going to be a different, more optimistic viewpoint. 
Um, and we're going to be looking for the truth in things and, the, and you know, higher knowledge, Sag rules, higher knowledge, Sag rules, um, you know, schooling, the ju judicial system, um, spirituality, religions, you know, anything that, that you have to have a higher thought process for. It's the opposite of Gemini, which, you know, is putting together the pieces of everything in our reality, the small things, and then our, our surroundings. And Sag is the understanding of the knowledge of things outside of ourselves, outside of our knowledge, and outside of our surroundings. So foreign people, um, travel, um, you know, going, traveling abroad, studying abroad, that kind of stuff rules Sagittarius. So Sagittarians love to travel and that kind of stuff. So Mercury slipping into Sag. Um, Yes, on November the 5th. And so, okay, with this, we're going to have less focus. We, we're, we're kind of been a little bit blocked and pushing forward um, with what we want to do. We just Knight of Pentacles, so this is about, like, getting things done, you know, just just, just on the Earth realm. This, I'm not talking about Taurus with the Earth realm. This is the Pentacles energy, okay? This is a very practical energy, very, you know, by the book energy. And, and he really wants to get work done, okay? Um, very efficient worker. But there's blockage happening, and that's because we've been missing the objectivity and missing the practicality and the clean mental um, foresight that we've been needing. We, with Mercury and Scorpio, we've been kind of looking more underneath the surface and been more in, uh, in our emotions, the water sign. So Sag moving into, a, I mean, Mercury moving into Sagittarius is going to give us Sagittarius is higher knowledge, our higher thought process. So we're going to be thinking more on a, you know, um, more worldly view, a, a more grand scheme. And so that's going to be um, allowing us to move forward with, with our what we're producing um, because we're more focused on it, okay? It's also going to be bringing us tons of messages, okay? Um, and we got the Treasure Island card a lot for sort of Scorpio energy because that's more like finding treasure. But message in the bottle is kind of where messages are coming to you, okay? And that makes sense with Mercury being in Sagittarius, so maybe you're going to receive lots of messages um, from foreign people or or from for different countries that are far away, um, new knowledge from different cultures, um, new messages and emails from people, you, you know, of different walks of life, okay, um, with Mercury and Sagittarius. Okay, so now let's shift into November the 7th. Lots of happening in the beginning of November. November 7th, Venus slips into Scorpio. So Venus has been in Libra, which is this ruler, and it has been, you know, allowing us to really be focusing on relationships and really trying to solidify relationships, heal relationships, mending things, focusing on, you know, the partnerships we want, um, but on a mental basis. That's the air sign in Libra, on a communicative basis, again, with the air sign. Now Venus is going to slip into Scorpio, and that's about the intimacy in relationships, the physicality in relationships. So we're going to be focusing on what are people doing in our relationships with us? You know, how, what, what, what's the, how are we intimately connecting and, and fixing those things? Um, dealing with sexuality, that's going to be really big with Venus and Scorpio. Dealing with power issues in relationship, control issues, okay? Um, so that's going to be, my back is still, I heard. That's going to be theme um, with Venus and Scorpio, okay? It's also going to be now that Venus is in Scorpio, our antennas from Scorpio, you know, picking up on things, our detective kind of sense is going to be, in relationships now it's been in our surroundings it's been in our mind but now we're going to be really underneath the key we're going to be really seeing the hidden motives and desires and hidden things in relationships okay so cheaters watch out because it's time your time's up um, um any kind of hidden secrets that have been underneath in your intimate relationships will now be released um, you might have been picking up on it but now is the time things are going to be coming out because venus is rules relationships um, let's see. Then we have a big break, and we don't have really anything happening until the 13th of November, which is a Monday. And that is when Venus will be on top in conjunct of Jupiter and Scorpio, okay? So this day, anything that touches Jupiter is expanded upon, and it's added blessings and luck, because Jupiter, you know, just provides luck and abundance and expands on anything it touches, because it's expansive. It's the gassy one. Um, and so we had the Sun conjunct Jupiter on October the 26th, which was the luckiest day of the year. Um, in Scorpio, it might not have felt like it because it was in Scorpio, but you received lots and lots of information um, since Thursday, okay? A lot more optimistic, emotionally optimistic about, you know, even transformation as well we've been 
Um, and so this time Venus is going to touch Jupiter, and so it's going to be, our relationships are going to be blessed with this Scorpio energy and expand upon um, in our financial, um, our finances as well, um, and our enjoyment, but in a Scorpio way. So again, emotionally, um, and dealing with contact with others. Then we're going to have the new moon in Scorpio. So new moons are always periods where you have this extreme clarity because the sun and the moon are together. Um, the moon clearly is not in the sky. You don't see it because the sun is beside it and not opposite it. Um, and so there's nothing reflecting on the moon. Um, and so when the sun and the moon are together, their energy is shared. And so our emotions and our mental state, which is our moon, our moon is in combination and, and blended in harmony with our ego and our sense of self, which is the sun. Um, and so both in Scorpio and Pluto is going to also be connected with it. So we're both going to really be focused on transformation, um, but not just from a transformation in ourself, but an emotional transformation as well. Um, and energetically for that, karmic situations that are going to be happening, again, see this Treasure Island card comes up for the Scorpio energy. Things are going to be, things that are hidden are revealed to us, okay? Um, that's going to heal some karmic things that I'm hearing one more card. So go with the flow of what happens. Notice all these cards are blue. This is this water energy here. Um, I also see blue for the throat chakra and the, um, the, the light blue for the throat chakra and the indigo for the third eye. And so it's talking about, you know, the insight you're going to be receiving and then communicating new things about that, okay? Healing karma, um, new revelations coming up, new surprises, new treasures coming in. Um, so just flow with what's happening because, again, it, water signs understand flow because they understand spirituality. They understand that we're not just alone in this, in here, um, and that, that, you know, there is meaning to everything. Um, and, and we're being guided, so, yeah. Then lastly, we have Sagittarius season starting November the 22nd, okay? So all the deep, dark transformation and learning will be over November 22nd. Um, and the sun will enter Sagittarius, which will be this energy of optimism I was talking about earlier. Also on that day, Neptune will be going direct, okay? So Neptune has been um, retrograde, and Neptune is the planet of Pisces, ruler of Pisces, ruler of our imagination, our fantasy world, the sci-fi, um, the spiritual subconscious realm, um, that kind of thing. And so Neptune has been retrograde since June, the middle of June. And so internally we've been, you know, kind of um, really dreaming and, and, and creating stories for ourselves. And, and But it's caused a fog in our reality. We haven't really been able to really see exactly What's going on? We've kind of been in like a fog and a haze, um, not really able to see true clarity. And so with Neptune going direct, the fog will be removed, and now we'll be able to see reality from fantasy, okay? We're not going to have that kind of rose-colored glasses kind of vibe. Um, and that, to me, has happened because over the summer, we were building up for the eclipse in August, so we needed to be more fanciful, more dreamy, so that we could envision what our new futures were going to be. But now that we're kind of understanding where we're going and we're really ready to like work on that and actually manifest things, we don't need to be so dreamy. We need to actually be more re realistic and we be able to really see clarity. And so Neptune's going to be going direct for us um, and moving forward again, November 22nd, which also, which is crazy, the number, when Sag goes, is Sag Seat just starts, when the sun enters the constellation of Sagittarius. And what's crazy is, both, number one, are ruled by Jupiter, which is um, the ancient ruler of Neptune is Jupiter, which is higher knowledge, and, and, and but it's that insight, that vision, okay? Pisces rules the vision of the subconscious, but Sagittarius has the vision of all-knowing. They rule the Akashic Records, which is the, the, the um, just the place where all knowledge is stored. So, like, the universe is omnipresent, omni... So, like, everywhere... Um, omniscient so it knows all and so basically the Akashic Records is, is, is the representation of all knowing knowledge of the universe and so Sagittarius holds that so Sagittarius seems to just know things and that's why they have this vision of like oh I see, like I saw that like I just can see that happening um, and so we're going to be having this vision forward of ourselves with Sagittarius we're going to be our gift now is leaving Scorpio we're not going to be super you know intuitive as much you know and, and picking up on things our gift now is the insight and the future vision that we're going to get in Sagittarius, which is going to help us to really 
you know, push forward with our dream because we have a better vision of things. And that's great because who can see through binoculars if there's fog in the way with Neptune? You can't. So now Neptune's going direct the day we need the binoculars. We put on the binoculars to see, you know, far away. We had the magnifying glass on looking deep down with Scorpio. Then we pick up the binoculars, telescope, and we're looking out, and the fog clears. So that is your October, I mean, your November astrology. Um, yeah, hope you, you know, got a lot out of that. Um, and now I'm going to be moving into individual um, astrology and tarot energy for each sign. Yeah, so stay tuned and let's do it. Oh, I wanted to add a quick little snippet talking about moon sign, rising sign, and sun sign. So for these videos, you need to be watching, um, like I have Aquarius sun. So I'm going to watch the video for Aquarius sun. I have a Gemini moon, I'm going to watch the video for Gemini moon. And I have a Virgo rising, so I'm going to watch the video for my Virgo rising. Um, watch the Virgo video for my Virgo rising. But you have to interpret it differently for each video, okay? So Gemini affects me not like someone with a Gemini rising. Because rising sign is your personality, how you come off to the world. And your moon is how you emotionally react and how you um, deal with things and, and your response, okay? So I emotionally react like a Gemini. And I deal with things like a Gemini and process things like a Gemini. So in dealing with my life and, and, and how I'm processing, and one of, if I want to know for this next month of November how I'm going to emotionally be processing things, I'm going to watch the Gemini video for my Gemini moon. Okay? Virgo rising is how I'm dealing with my reality, how like my life is going to be happening, like how people are going to be seeing me for the month. Okay, That's what I'm going to watch the Virgo video for. And then Aquarius is my sun sign, so in my reality, what's going to be actually happening? What, what is my, what am I going to be processing and thinking for my ego, myself, and what am I learning, what's my soul going to be learning? So I watched my Aquarius video for that. So just, that's all I wanted to just say that. So for these videos I'm going to be doing, check in with those three things, or even you can even get deep with you, or if you're deep like that, you want to do your Venus or your Mars, like you have, I have Venus and Pisces, so for my love, you know, and, and, and my relationships, um, I can watch the Pisces video to understand, so for November, that Pisces energy is going to be affecting my Venus planet. So you can get deep and go into that. You can go into houses. I have a third house Scorpio. So like all Scorpio season, I'm redoing my third house of my surroundings and my mental thought process. You know what I mean? So in my communication, and notice how much I've been communicating this Scorpio season and, and about these deep things. So it makes sense. So you literally can do it with everything. But I wanted to say that uh, for people that are following my channel because I want anytime you're watching my videos to have that understand that deep understanding of how you can use the signs for your soul. Not just understanding it as like I'm an Aquarius, but like how is that really affecting your life? Um, so hopefully you understand that. And back into the videos now. What's up, Cancer? Welcome to your November. I do this every time. I literally don't know why. I do November and I forget. November tarot, oracle, and astrology reading. It's not that hard to say, but for some reason I just can't say that shit. Okay, welcome to your, <laughs> your reading, Cancer. Let's get into it. Um, so starting off, going into November, there's something you're contemplating or waiting on. There's something that, you know, is, is you need more insight about. There's something that you're taking time to really process on. There's something that, an opportunity that maybe just is in the process, so you have to just kind of sit for a second and wait. Um, or there's something that, it even could be, though, that if you're, processing too much there's an opportunity in your face and you're missing it because this is the four of cups um so i i feel more though that you're taking more of a of, of a internal approach especially with the scorpio season you know where we all have this magnifying glass trying to like really see the details of our, our life and looking underneath the, su the surface so you're taking more of a contemplative approach right now to really see the details in something that you're looking for um you really want to make sure that you're not going to get robbed basically you got this this seven of swords energy so you want to make sure things are fair and what's going to be happening nothing sketchy goes on and people's intentions are correct and, and you're not you know being taken advantage of basically um you also want to make sure that this, this is a card of self-sabotage and so with it being reversed i think this is an internalized focus of i'm waiting i want i don't want to mess it up i don't want to like sabotage it i want to just make sure everything's going to be right and i don't want it to be stolen from me okay um and I'm seeing that it could be something material. You got the Ace of Pentacles um, crowning the energy. So for November, you know, you're, you're going to be contemplating, kind of put pieces together on something. 
um, but by the end of the middle of November to the end of November, you're going to be manifesting so much faster with the Ace of Pentacles, and your lifestyle is going to be really shifting. Energetically, um, this contemplation is going to be is really beneficial. It's giving you a leg up. Okay, it's giving you a, a higher perspective. It's giving you some new, new additional um, boost that's going to help you to get this Ace of Pentacles energy you're looking for. This new start. This new career. This new, you know, money. Something you're looking for on the on the material. Um, but again, you're still trying to make sure everything is fair and to keep things balanced. Um, you have strong, extreme intuition and, and feeling. And so you know, you know, if you do something that's going to throw, to make someone feel a certain type of way, you don't want to have that dissonance in your life. So you're looking for making sure things are fair right now. Now, going into astrologically what's going on for you guys, the full moon on the 4th will be in your 11th house, okay? Um, and so that's the house of Aquarius, that's the house of your goals and wishes, the house of your friend circles, the house of your, your higher community. So um, you're going to be really focused on humanity. Maybe even you're going to be doing something volunteering or giving back this weekend or really having a great time with friends, um, focusing on your goals and, and where you want to be. Aquarius is the future-oriented sign, thinking about the future. And so you're going to be focused on, you know, that as well. Um, something you've been wishing for maybe maybe coming true um, because, again, it's your hopes and wishes on 11th house. So that's, you know, what you wish for the future. So that full moon is a culmination period. So something you've been thinking about since um, April, the end of April, is going to be manifesting in your reality and dealing with friendships or um, some social circle, so, some so, social group, um, or your hopes and wishes. Then we're going to be having Mercury moving into your sixth house, guys. Sixth house, guys. So since about October the 10th, you've been thinking about enjoyment. You know, you've had the, the Mercury in your fifth house, so you've been thinking about you know, your hobbies, you've been thinking about having fun, create, being creative. Um, it's it's the house of um, romance and love affairs so you've been having fun, just thinking and talking and just being like the light and shining and expressing and having a great time. Things are going to get a little more deep, not deep, but just more um, like, str not stressful, what's the word? I'm, I don't know why it's always going to be so negative with this Mercury and Scorpio. Basically, you have to put the work in. Mercury's going to be going to your sixth house on the fifth. So starting on Sunday, you're going to be really focused more now on your work, your lifestyle, your career. Not your career necessarily because it's 10th house, but more your, your, your work schedule is going to be changing. You're going to be focusing and communicating about work in general or like, I want to change my lifestyle. I want to change my health. Those kind of things. Um, we're going to be having Venus moving into your fifth house. So you've been, you know, your relationships, um, your sense of love has really been thinking about home. And you can build your home. Um, even thinking about your internal emotions, you've really been trying to keep yourself feeling good emotionally, um, keeping your emotional home stable. Um, you've really been focusing on family issues. You know, this past Venus went into Libra about a month ago. So yeah, so this past month, you've really been focusing on you know that those energies, things in your home. But now Venus is going to move into your fifth house, so that's going to be the fun house. The, you know, you're going to be really thinking about. What you can do to express yourself, what you can do to, you know, share love with people, and just all the fun Leo things that, that are about expression and having fun. And lastly, the sun will be moving into your sixth house, I believe. Yes. Into your sixth house, um, November 22nd. So Sag season for you, anytime this move, the sun's in Sagittarius, you guys are put into work. You're thinking about your you're working a lot, you're giving service to others, um, you're doing a lot for other people, you're super busy running around. 555, I just found the time, so lots of change and stuff happening. Um, yeah, your lifestyle is completely changing. This is that Virgo energy that, you know, what you're working on changes um, during this period. So that is your astrology as well. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. Um, stay tuned for more, and I will get back with you later. Do six.